This is a millipede, and it lives in this terrarium ecosystem with hundreds of other animals, like this beetle, this slug, and this isopod. This ecosystem might look relatively healthy, but it misses one big thing, a predator. And in this video, I'm taking that job. How I'm doing this, you will see later in this video. But no, I'm not eating the animals. Now you might think no predators is a good thing for animals like this snail or this isopod, but even they will benefit from a predator in the ecosystem, provided that they aren't the ones that get eaten like Bob here. Poor Bob. To show you what the problem is, I have to add some food in the terrarium. I added a piece of broccoli and carrot and off cream a piece of cucumber. And this is the problem. They are just with too many. When I made this terrarium I added about 5 millipedes and a few isopods. But they can't stop humping. They are great at multitasking though. Humping and eating at the same time. Couple goals I guess. You might think that this is a paradise for these animals. Just running around, eating, humping left and right. But to understand what the problem is, you have to understand how an ecosystem works. And I will explain it to you, very simplified. At the bottom of the food chain, we have the plants, moss for instance. This moss is eaten by animals like ice pots and millipedes. And they are eaten by predators like a centipede. The problem is, when there's no predator, the number of isopods and millipedes will rise because they can hump and eat and chill without worrying. The result is that all the moss or plants are eaten and the ice pods and millipedes run out of food and die. Now besides plants, they also eat the occasional dead grasshopper I put in there. Even millipedes need some proteins. And this snail also wanted a piece of the action. For now, there is only one predator in this ecosystem. And it is not this millipede that is a bit confused and started eating a live slug. I think this millipede has an identity crisis. Or I'm breeding a new species here. Has anyone seen behavior like this in millipedes? Let me know in the comments. The only predator that is now in the ecosystem is this ground beetle. He probably mostly hunts springtails, like here. But he is no match for the bigger millipedes. However, don't underestimate these animals. Some species of ground beetles are able to catch prey much bigger than themselves. Like this one, catching and eating a frog. But because there is only one predator in this ecosystem, I have to become one. And no, I'm not eating the animals. I'm catching them and releasing them in the main garden. The ice pot was the first one, but let's get another. This is a little snail and it's getting out of its shell. While looking for animals I could release, I found a surprise in this ecosystem. Another predator, a rove beetle. This one also hunts our precious springtails. But for now, I will leave him in there. I also saw this earthworm, which is great for aerating the ground. But let's get some more animals to release. Here is a slug, and apparently it is taking half the terrarium with it. And here, of course, a millipede. I try to pick it up gently. I hope he is happy that he's getting out. I caught some more animals off screen. And here are all the animals I'm going to release today. A lot of millipedes, some isopods, a snail, a slug. That should be enough for today. I looked for a nice spot in my garden to release them. Here is plenty of food and places to hide. An important note, never release animals that are not native to where you live. They could become invasive. And there they go. They are now going to look for a dark place to hide. I will probably release more animals off screen. If you want more content about terrariums, ecosystems, animals, please consider subscribing. And if you want to know how I built this terrarium and how it looked at the start, watch this video next. Thanks for watching.